Well, hello there. Welcome to the channel. My name is James and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema, all things sequels. This is part two of my sequel series that I've been running this week on the channel. Definitely check out part one of my sequel series where I talk about some of my favorite sequels of all time. And I've really enjoyed your comments on favorite sequels that you have on your list. And I've just been adding those to my list to come up with a bigger list of favorite sequels. There's so many sequels that I've missed in my list because there's a lot of films I haven't seen. So I've really been enjoying hearing your additions in the comments section. So keep those coming. This is part two of that series. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about sequels that didn't quite work for me. So these are sequels that I consider to be bad, should probably never have been made, should never have seen the light of day, should never have been green lit. Somebody should have said no, 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 and did a hard pass on these sequels. This is my list and I'm looking forward to seeing in the comment section, what are some sequels that you've seen that didn't work for you, that you hated, that you wish had never been made? I wanna hear those in the comment section below, but without any further ado, let's jump right into these bad sequels. So let's get started. All right, this is one of the best films I've seen in the last 20 plus years, The Matrix. I love this film. This is the 4K Ultra HD edition of The Matrix, and it's fantastic. It comes in Dolby Atmos, Dolby Audio. This is a really, really nice film. And when I saw this film in 1999, it blew my mind. The sequels that should never have happened. My entry is all The Matrix sequels. As I think about it now, including, including Matrix Resurrections, should never have happened. The more I think about it, this movie stands alone. It stands on its own. And it would have been better off if they had just made this film, blew everybody's minds in 1999, and left it at that. Don't even bother with these. Don't even bother with Matrix Resurrections. The Animatrix is actually pretty good, but the Matrix, the first film, stands alone and would have been just fine if they never, ever did anything after that. Brilliant, brilliant film. All right, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think about that because that is that is a series that I'm sure gets a lot of, of thought and controversy and analysis. I do not have a physical copy of Matrix Resurrections and I never upgraded. You'll notice that I have a 4K of The Matrix but not a 4K or Blu-ray of these DVDs of these sequels. And that's why <laughs> I don't care to upgrade those sequels. I'm fine with them being on DVD. I'm just fine with that. So I'm looking forward to hearing you guys' thoughts on the Matrix sequels and whether or not they should have been made. My next film here is one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. It spawned several sequels. Superman 2 made my best sequels list. That was followed up with a couple of sequels not so good. Superman 3 had Richard Pryor in it. And so for me, that was a saving grace, just having Richard Pryor. He was a little bit, you know, he was sort of funny in that film. And so I can live with that. What I didn't care for was Superman 4. And that's my entry here for worst sequel, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. I got two words for you, Nuclear Man. Really, are you kidding me? Nuclear Man. Superman was going up against Nuclear Man in this, in, in this movie. One of the dumbest premises ever. That sequel should never have been made. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the next one. Wanna hear your thoughts on the original Superman series and what your favorites are in that series and what you think about Superman 3 and Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Okay. The original Star Wars trilogy. These are on DVD here. This is my DVD set of episode four, five, and six. One of the great trilogies of all time. Really enjoyed that series. This is the menu screen for The Empire Strikes Back, which made my best sequels entry in video one. Here is my entry for worst sequels and sequels that maybe shouldn't have been made. The Star Wars sequel trilogy. All right, Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and The Last Jedi, and you'll notice that one is missing. I don't have a physical copy of Rise of Skywalker. 
I have not been able to bring myself to buy that film because I really did not enjoy Rise of Skywalker. When I see it, when I saw it in theaters in December of 2019, I was really disappointed. Okay, I was very unhappy with the direction that they took with that film. And I know a lot of people felt that way. And for me, it was so off off course that it just ruined it for me ruined the entire sequel trilogy and it it left me with a feeling that you know they didn't really have a good master plan for this sequel trilogy this sequel trilogy for me started out great with the force awakens i thought this was a promising start to this new sequel trilogy it borrowed a lot from episode four a new hope but it still introduced some really nice characters with uh, Faye, with not Faye, Ray, Finn, and Poe. And I, I really kind of got into it. Plus it had Harrison Ford, you had Carrie Fisher, and you had Mark Hamill appear in this film. And so it had those callbacks to the past that I really appreciated and I really liked the new characters. So I was invested in it from this first movie. The Last Jedi went into some different directions with Ryan Johnson. And I, I thought, okay, well, this is interesting. And I was gonna roll with it. But then when Rise of Skywalker came along and it tried to retcon almost all of The Last Jedi and what came before it, it just made a mess of things. And it introduced some characters hearkening back to the old past of Star Wars that just did not work for me at all and ruined this sequel trilogy. So I'm gonna say the sequel trilogy of Star Wars bad sequels. I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. I'll make a quick mention though, because you may say, well, what about the prequels? What about the Star Wars prequels? Should those have never been made? For me, the saving grace of the prequels is this film right here, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. I, I remember seeing this in theaters, and for me, this movie saves the prequels because it gives us how Anakin turned to the dark side, how he became Darth Vader, and what happened between him and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I think that makes it worth it. Now, I still am not a fan of these films, but I think, this, I think the prequels trilogy ended pretty well with Revenge of the Sith. So the prequel trilogy is spared my ax in this particular case, but I definitely wanna hear in the comment section what you all think of the sequel trilogy and the prequel trilogy and how they stand up against the original trilogy for Star Wars. All right, so in the first episode, I mentioned that Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite sequels and it absolutely is. Now, in terms of poor sequels, The Dark World, makes the list but the one that really makes the list for me for sequels of the thor series is thor love and thunder okay that film for me my son and i went to see it a couple i guess a month or two ago in the theater and we walked out of the theater wishing we had wishing we could have those two hours back okay did not enjoy that movie at all we really loved ragnarok it had a great mix of action and comedy, and it was perfect. So this is T, uh, Tiki Watiki's first outing as director in this series, I think. He came back for Thor Love and Thunder, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work this time. The humor didn't land on us at all. I don't think I laughed at all in the entire movie, and it just didn't work. And I just did not care for Thor Love and Thunder at all. So. Thor Love and Thunder unfortunately makes my list of worst sequels. Let me know in the comments section what you think about that. And let me know, did you enjoy Thor Love and Thunder? Let me know in the comments. Okay, the next one, we're gonna leave Star Wars, the MCU, and we're gonna come back down to Earth. Specifically, we're gonna come back down to Africa and come back down to New York City we're gonna revisit a character that Eddie Murphy played famously in 1988 in Coming to America. This is the, the first Coming to America, a film starring Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. Legendary film, one of the great comedies of all time. The sequel, Coming to America, not so much, okay? That came out on Amazon 
Was it earlier this year or was it last year? I don't even remember and I don't even care, okay? But I saw it once and that's the only time I ever need to see that movie. I did not enjoy the sequel to Coming to America. I just, it just did not work for me at all. And for that reason, it makes the list of sequels that probably should never have been made. But let me know in the comment section what you think about the sequel to Coming to America. This film from, from Eddie, brilliant, brilliant. One of the best comedies of all time. If you have not seen this, check this out. Don't waste your time with the sequel. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going back into superhuman, superhero land, superhuman, superhero land. And we're gonna talk about a few superhero sequels that should never have been made. I love the first Wonder Woman film. Really, really good film. Gal Gadot, directed by Patty Jenkins. Really nice film. Wonder Woman 84 did not work for me at all. I saw it on, I think it was Christmas Day of 2020, and I still go into Best Buy every now and then, and I'll see those Wonder Woman 84 steelbooks being sold for 30 some dollars, and I ask myself, why is that on sale for $30? Why is that being sold for $30? Why is that not on sale for like $10 by now? But I love the first film. This was great. This is great. Really enjoyed this. You have Chris Pine in this. Wonder Woman 84 did not work for me, but I am hopeful for the third Wonder Woman film. If Patty Jenkins comes back for it and Gal Gadot are signed up for it, I am all in. I'm ready to give it another chance, but Wonder Woman 84 did not work for me at all. Um, so let me know in the comments section what you thought of that film and whether or not you think that sequel should have been made. It's one of those things where it probably should have been made a little bit better. Okay, is all I can say about it. Another sequel that didn't work for me was, of course, the sequel to this film, Man of Steel, and that is Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Didn't really care for this film very much. Um, I, I can see what they were trying to do with this film, but it was just, it just didn't work for me. And I think that is the feeling that is shared by a lot of people that, you know, Batman v Superman, not among people's favorites. Another superhero movie here, the original Spider-Man trilogy with the first Spider-Man movie by, by Sam Raimi and Spider-Man 2, two of the great superhero films of all time was then followed up by Spider-Man 3. And that movie just did not work for me. That is an example of a sequel that probably should not have been made or should have been made better. It was a hot mess. It just had too much going on. There are some redeeming or positive aspects of Spider-Man 3. I did like the Sandman character, but you just had too much going on with Sandman, Venom, uh, Harry Osborn's Goblin. You just had too much going on and they didn't do a good job of making it a cohesive, a cohesive and coherent story. It was an example of trying to go bigger with the movie and put too much in it and you just end up with a big mess. So Spider-Man 3 makes my list of sequels that probably shouldn't have been made, but it followed up on two of the best Spider-Man movies that are out there. The, the original Spider-Man film from Sam Raimi from 2002 and Spider-Man 2 from 2004. Two of the best Spider-Man films even to this day. Highly recommended. Spider-Man 3, skip it. Not to mention that dance with Peter Parker that Tobey Maguire did. In other words, skip. All right, the next sequels are that I'll bring up here, or and maybe the last ones, or actually I may have another one, but yeah, I think this is the last one I'll do. Terminator, great film. Terminator 2, Judgment Day made my best sequels list. Really enjoy this film. It's a tentpole event, great, great film. But the sequels that should not, probably should not have been made are the Terminator sequels since Terminator 2. So Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, Terminator, in this case, this is Terminator Genesis. I don't think I even own 
uh, salvation, Terminator salvation or whatever it's called. But basically, the Terminator sequel since Terminator 2, hard pass on those. So that's my last entry. But let me know, what do you guys think of my worst sequels list? What are some other worst sequels that you would add to your list? These are sequels that you saw that you did not like at all, did not work, did not live up to the original film or previous sequels, and you just feel like, you know what? They shouldn't have even bothered making that sequel. Let me know some examples of that. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time at the movies. Peace.